don't know if there is such a thing as an innovational gene, but I think I was born with it. I'm always improving and making things better. Working as an innovation manager, I work as an intermediate between decision makers and creatives. And every day, I'm confronted with the happy creative power of media professionals and the challenges they face when they try to get their ideas to be taken into production. I'm fascinated by the dynamics of the creative process. Why are OK ideas taken into production and brilliant ones not? How do you get the best idea to win? And of course, the competitive rules of evolution also apply to our creative process. But I want to share with you today my vision on how I think we can help the best ideas to win. So storytellers look for a stage. And in the past, they chose us. For prime time was the place to be if you wanted to catch a big audience. Now the web is the stage to reach and interact with that same audience. And today's storytellers have a lot more platforms to choose from and are not depending on broadcasting alone anymore. And I wonder if we are reacting to this in the right way. I wonder if we are reacting to this effect of the digital revolution in the right way. This is what we do. We explore new technologies. We try to understand our audience online behavior. We extend our narratives, teach ourselves to, and we tell our bosses to catch up. For example, this tweet. It's a tweet by Jan de Jong. He's the chief of the Dutch Public News Corporation, and he tweets about a meeting he had with the chief, uh, the CEO of Heineken, you know, the big brewery. And they were discussing online strategies to catch a younger audience. Two big chiefs discussing, uh, looking for an answer to the same question. So the good news is we're moving, but we need to speed up. We need to speed up for the next generation of media consumers is quickly gaining control over the remote. Here comes Nafisa. This is Nafisa, very connected, two laptops and an iPhone on her side. And of course, on the bedside table, the remote control. She either has her own television or the television is in the family room, and in both cases, she's in charge of when and what to watch. And we need to keep this picture in mind. This is our audience. And we as public broadcasters work in the interest of the public. And in this confusing digital age, we need to make an impact. We need to make an impact with journalistic, cultural, and educational content, or else we are done for. So not only do we need to speed up, we also need to focus on impact. And to get impact, you need content. And for content, you need storytellers. So storytellers are the core value, and I don't mean core business, they are the core value of public broadcasting. We need to invest in this value. We need this talent. And we need uh, content creators with high credibility and mad convincing personalities, like these two, for example, Ross and Turner. And we need to bring them in now, for they already started without us, using social media as their platform, switching between television, video, radio, audio, public and commercial content. They connect easily with their, with their audience, and they also even make money doing so. They really play with it. Media are a means to an end for them. So how do we get them to choose us as their stage? Now imagine yourself being a young creative with an enormous drive to tell a compelling story. Or even better, imagine yourself to be that piece of paper with this idea on it. You get the address, you get to the Walhalla of storytelling, and this is what you're up against. Big institutions. We have become big institutions. And we, have got stru uh, we got stuck in matrix-like structures and low-cost production methods. And this is the change we need now. This is the box we got stuck in. 
And I try to convince my bosses every day, <laughs> every day, to take ownership of this change. I tell them, speed up, open up, focus on impact, and attract new 2.0 talent. And to try to make them aware of this, I first used an offline um, success number called a book. Uh, and what I did is I uh, uh, collected and connected 149 um, media content creators. And the book is called Fast Forward. And what I wanted to do with it is prove that these are the new Indians. These are the ones that have to go and do the job. These are the ones that have to make it happen. Not the structures, not the low-cost methods. We chose 149 because Dunbar, you might have heard this story, Dunbar is a scientist. He found out that we operate best in groups of 150. We don't need too many procedures. We can do it with not too much hassle. Um, there are whole tribes and army troops and factories like Gore-Tex working based on this principle. And I found that very interesting. And we chose 149 because uh, we wanted, always wanted to have room for one more, for obviously this list is never finished. So, and this is my point for today. I am convinced that if we do not keep attracting and attract this kind of media talent, 2.0 under the age of 45, then we are not able to take public content into the next phase of the digital revolution. So I have a question for you to take home to tell your chiefs, or if you are a chief, ask yourself, please, are you pushing creativity forward? Thank you.